Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. What an honor. Um, I want us to appreciate the Lord Jesus Christ before we begin. Let's put our hands together and appreciate Jesus. And appreciate the almighty God. Your creator, my creator. The lover of our souls. The one who went to the cross and died for you and I. As a result of your free gift of salvation, that's why you are here. The well of salvation is what we are drinking from. Let's appreciate the almighty God. The one who planted you in your mother's womb. The one who brought you out of eternity into the earth. The one who gave you a vision. Who gave you a direction. The almighty God who had held you in his hands. Who had supported you. Who had defended you. Who had caused you to escape so many deaths. The almighty God is his name. Great and wonderful he is. The almighty God, I don't want you to stop. I want us to appreciate God. Let's appreciate this God. He is good. He is kind. He is faithful. He is a magnificent God. There is no God like him. None can be compared to him. From the beginning to the end, he is God. He is the self-existing God. He is the unchangeable changer. He is the only true God, the only wise God, the immortal, the invisible, the God only wise. Father, we give you praise. We appreciate you. We honor you. We magnify your name. There is no God like you. We pay obeisance this day. We appreciate you for the gift of life. We thank you for the bread in our nostrils. We thank you for protection. We thank you for provision. Blessed be your holy name. We thank you for this platform that we are working on. We give you praise and honor. What shall we say to these things? Glory and honor be ascribed unto your name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise and honor. We appreciate you, God. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be magnified. God is seeking for worshippers. If God is going to do anything here today, which he has been doing, he's looking for worshippers. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Let's worship him. Because you can just worship God and collect your miracles. You don't have to do anything. Everything you have heard, unless the Holy Spirit breathes on it, you will not be able to use it. So why don't you worship the Lord? Worship God. I have a feeling here that we should worship God. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our God. You are worthy. Can you help me?
You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. This afternoon, before I left London, breaking news, earthquake in Morocco, over 800 people dead. Now, 1,000. My daughter just came from Morocco only a week ago. A lot of people go to Morocco. All of us, many of us travel there. The earth is convulsing. God created us to worship him. Whatever we are doing here is secondary. We were created for worship. We were created as an object of God's love. So when a man is worshiping God, that's what he was created to do. Praise ye the Lord. Thank you, Father. We are so grateful. We could have been the 800 people gone. But we are standing on the altar because you have given us the grace. Holy Spirit of the living God, we thank you for this privilege. We thank you for the ability to still be in the land of the living. We thank you for you have called us to be partners with you for the work that you are doing on earth. We are very grateful. Accept our thanks and praises. Do what only you can do. Open all our eyes. Bless all our lives, our marriages, and everything about us. And cause us to walk in destiny. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. First, I want to acknowledge Pastor Kende. Please put your hands together for him. And his beautiful wife, Pastor Adiola. Let's appreciate God for their lives. Please appreciate them. I tell people, the greatest office on earth is the office of the pastor. It's true. Because we are dealing with eternal matters. Even the president has a pastor. You know that. So, then the pastor is greater than the president. Because we are working for God. Sometimes we don't acknowledge that office. And that's why many young people, the younger generation, they are running away from the office. So, if they call you now and say, you are called to go and pastor, they say, no, God has not called me. No, God has called you. Is that is a wonderful office. God will bless you for doing the work. You can imagine walking with God on earth. What other glory can that be? Praise God. And you can never walk if you have all of you, you have jobs, some of you are in uni or whatever. You have an employer that is so rich, the richest man on earth. Or if you work for, is he Elon Musk now? Or which of the richest people, Bill Gates, do you think that you would ever be poor if you are close to that individual? So I'm saying to you, you don't even have to be a pastor. You are sitting here today. If you come close to God, if you walk with God, your life will be beautiful. Your life will be useful. Your life will be impacting. What you can never do by yourself with God walking with you on the earth you will do marvelously. So give God a round of applause. And welcome to the office of God. <laughs> Praise God. I don't know who they are going to be calling next. That is not my message, but I think I'm speaking to somebody here. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> right. Um, I also want to thank the pastor because it takes grace. I was looking. Your church is 11 years. Yes. And um, I believe your first child is 14 or 13. 14, praise God. So that means you started pastoring when she was three. Two, two plus. So they are pastors of childbearing age. Now, many of you here, they will call you, you say, no, I have one child. Maybe it's just one that you have. So, but they've been pastoring as young couples like yourself. And the one, one thing you want to say is that this platform, this platform has touched life for 11 years tremendously. Only eternity can quantify what this platform is doing. If they did not sacrifice, you will not be here. You will not be here. So always appreciate your pastors because they have sacrificed. It takes the grace of God to serve God. So please make their lives 
easy. The Lord bless you. Thank you, sir. Now, thank you, ma. I appreciate you. She's very quiet. He's one of my quiet pastors. I used to tell him that, ah, Pastor Kenny, you are very quiet. Okay, I bring greetings from House of Joy for Nations, uh, where I pastor. And we've been pastoring that church for 20 years. Um, and that is in London. We are in the same borough. We've never moved uh, from that borough. Uh, we'll be 20 years. We, are, we were 20 years this year. Uh, 2003 we started. What an amazing journey. So I bring greetings from everybody. And I also bring greetings from my husband who had made it possible for me to be here. Who had made it possible, who had supported me through ministries because um, he is a supporter. And so I want to encourage men, support your wife. If you support your wife, whatever glory she carries is yours. Yes. Whatever glory she brings in is also yours. So please do not stifle her gifts. Women have gifts that God has given them. You can have a Deborah in the house. You can have an Esther in the house. And they are called into leadership, even though they are women. But that's their specific and peculiar call. So, but don't be intimidated. Just support them to go to where the God has called them to be. So put your hands together for our men. Thank you. All right. We'll go quickly now to what we've got. How many minutes? Right, I've got four um, items here that we need to cover, and I want to appreciate the, the lead, Taiwo Oshundi. Did I get it right? Okay, God bless you. And Damilola Taiwo. Yes, thank you guys for what you are doing. This is amazing. Uh, I thank the Lord for that. And I also must mention this church. This is the first time that I have the privilege of standing on this platform. I was the area pastor for this area for nearly seven years. Seven, and I was plying London, Wolverhampton, oh my God, for nearly that time. But this is the first time I'm stepping here. So I'm grateful to God. Thank you, Pastor Kendi, for the work that you are doing. Okay, so the aim of this conference, I've been told, is to allow young couples, and I dare say any couple of whatever age, and then those of you online, are you listening from YouTube, from Facebook, Wherever you are, you're welcome. We want to thank you for joining us. And our prayer is that you will be tremendously blessed. And of course, those who will continuously listen and watch the video or the YouTube station years after today, we pray that this same anointing here will continue to repair homes in the name of Jesus. Okay, so four items have been given which we want to focus on is that the aim of this conference, why... I'm not going to say you, you, why God brought me here is that we want to remember God's original intent. God's original intent for marriage. Okay, the second thing is to strive to take practical steps to examine and sustain God's intent for marriage. This is the outline I was given. So I want to stay within what I was given. So the third thing is to grow and groom the marriage in love and respect for one another. And then the fourth is to receive fresh sustaining wine for their marriage. I pray that the almighty God will cause all these four things to be achieved today in Jesus' mighty name. Okay, so what is God's original intent for marriage? Why did God... When the word intent means the thought, what's your intention? It, means it has to do with something in your mind. Uh, word, the word that we speak is a container for our thoughts. If I think of something and I say it out, the word then becomes the vehicle that brings out my thoughts. Okay, so what was God's original intent? But before we do that, shall we see the anchor scriptures? Let's just quickly read the anchor, anchor scripture, Matthew 9, 17. Matthew 9, 17. And I'll read from the Passion Translation. It says, And who would pour fresh new wine into an old wineskin, eventually the wine will ferment and make the wineskin burst, losing everything. The wine is spilled and the wineskin ruined. Instead, New wine is always poured into a new wineskin 
so that both are preserved. So the goal is preservation. The goal for marriage is that marriage is preserved until death do either party pass. It's preserved. What, so the intention of God is that um, God didn't come to give us a system to um, accommodate our cultural and, um, what would we say now, religious beliefs. The ways of God are brand new. Uh, the culture and religion and Jesus, they are two parallel lines. They will never meet. What that story started when somebody came to Jesus and said, why is your disciples not fasting? And, and Jesus said to them, will the, 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 the friends of the groom, will they fast if the bridegroom is around? He said, no, they will not fast. But when he's taken away, they will fast. He said, so, uh, you know, so fasting in the religious time, they were just doing fasting as a religious exercise. But God is saying that the new fasting way that I'm introducing is not just a religious exercise. It's a new format entirely. You cannot merge the two. So say to your neighbor, you cannot use the old system for the new. Praise God. So are we all here ready for the new way? The new way. We want the new way, not the system that we knew. It's so interesting that I sat here. People talk about their culture or their culture or their upbringing and how they have been brought up. Yes, all of those things are good, but if some of them are not helping us, it's time to drop them and then pick up new ways, new ways of doing things so we can have new results. Um, because of our time, I know we have read John 2, 1 to 10. Uh, the Bible says there was a marriage in Canaan. I will just paraphrase, listen, and Jesus was invited. Jesus was invited. So may I say to you that he will not go where he's not invited. So now you have a marriage, you, where, however you started, wherever you are at is fine. You have the opportunity to st start afresh. You can invite Jesus today. If Jesus wasn't there before, it's fine. You can bring him in today. You can bring Jesus in at any point. That question that was asked, if a couple married the wrong couple, you have married, you have married, Jesus can still come in. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. So you can start with Jesus. He, Jesus specializes in bringing life out of death. So even if the situation was dead, you are a candidate for Jesus. He will bring life out of it, and then you begin to enjoy your life again. So the Bible said Jesus Christ was there, and the wine ran out. Your wine and my wine, we run out. We have heard. There's no marriage that wine don't run out. So don't feel uh, that you are the only one. If your marriage is going through stress at the moment, it's fine. Join the people whose marriages have gone through stress. Some are at the valley now. Some were at the top before, and they are going through all the bends and the rounds. There's nothing wrong with you. It's natural. Okay? So the Lord Jesus Christ, he talked about you will make all crooked way straight. See, if the way wasn't crooked, would there be any need for straightness? No. So he will make your marriage straight. Just stay with Jesus. He's, he's you know... Praise God. So the Lord Jesus Christ made that marriage straight. The wine ran out and Jesus brought out the new wine. And that marriage stood up again and began to run. So now, let's go to the intent. And I, everything I have written here, you have touched on, honestly speaking. I'm just going to re-emphasize it. Everything I've written down have been touched. You people, I told you, you have read my book <laughs> or my, my whatever my notes. Okay. Um, the goal is preservation, that it might be preserved. So we want to ask our question, what are the methods of preservation? How do you preserve something? Uh, if you talk about newness, the word new means it's a condition that is fresh, that is previously unused, is untouched, is new. We have never touched it before. So many of you would have to begin to do new things in your marriage that you have never done before. Some people are very traditional. Come out of tradition. This is not tradition. If you are going to enjoy heaven on earth, you get to come out of tradition to do things God's way. Praise God. So you all have first timer in the church. When the first timer come, what do we say? They are coming for the first time. So we are looking for systems that we have never used before. So keep your mind open. And keep your hearts open 
to use new systems. Okay, wine can be likened to something that brings joy, merriment, celebration, because wherever you find wine, there's celebration. So we are talking about the new wine that will bring celebration. Okay, right. Um, Romans 12, 2 said, uh, I beseech you, my brethren, don't copy the behavior and custom of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. We are talking about new wine. Into a new person. And then into a new person. How do you change into a new person? We are looking at the system for preservation. By transforming your mind. It is the mind that needs transformation. The mind. If the mind is not transformed, there's nothing anybody can do. We have to be willing to say, okay, I want to give it a try. I need my mind to be transformed. Praise God. By changing the way you think. It says, then you will learn to know the will of God, which is good, which is pleasing, and which is perfect. Um, let me see. I want to say that we are all Africans here. I don't see any Europeans at the moment. They are coming. Um, it therefore means that our cultures are, they may be different, but you will understand. Some, some, cult, some people from different cultures, um, I read the place where in, I think in the northern part of, of Africa or Nigeria, there, there was a culture where the men can marry more than one, uh, where the women can marry more than one man. You can Google it in Nigeria, where I came from. It used to be a culture, but they've stopped it now. You can imagine if you come out of that environment, and that's what you know. You would have multiple partners, and it would be easy for you, because that's how you grew up. So we want to throw away culture. And there are some cultures, even in the western part of the world, that believe in open marriages. My, my other sister was born in the western part of the world. My mom used to say to us then that they would say to her that one road doesn't enter the market. I don't know, those of you who are from the West, you don't follow one road to enter the market, so you take several routes. So the women and the men in those environments, in that culture, actually accept that the women can have concubines, and the men can have concubines, and they welcome each other, and they live together. It's ridiculous, strange culture. And now we are Christians, or you grow up like that. And there's some place in some data area where the women are the breadwinner. The men will sit down too. From morning to night, playing draft. I bind Satan. The man was supposed to be the breadwinner, to be the leader. He now becomes a woman and marries lots of women and sits down at home. And he's even giving commands to those women, you know, to go and come. If you come from that culture, it will be different. It will be difficult to change to the new. You know, there's a new way. So let's find that way. Genesis chapter 2. We can't talk about the intent of God without going to Genesis chapter 2. Uh, Pastor Joshua mentioned it. Genesis 2, 18, 20 to 25. It says, then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Now I want you to underline, not good for the man to be alone. I will tell you the things that we'll pick out there. It says, I will make him a helper who is just right for him. We underline that as well. He gave names to all the livestock of the birds. Who is the hidden Adam? He gave names to all the livestock, all the best of the sky, and all the white animals. But still, there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of the man's rib and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib. Say a woman from the rib. Let's underline that. And he brought her to the man. You see, marriage is God's intent. It was God who decided that he would find a wife for Adam. Though deep down in Adam's mind, he knew that the animals were not like him. But he just couldn't put his hand on that thing that was missing. So God was the one who intended marriage. It's not you. So when you enter into marriage... God's intent for that marriage, you need to find it. Because it was God's original intent. Praise God. Then Adam exclaimed, at last. Ha! Huh? You know when someone say, at last. That means I've been waiting. All these animals. God, at last. 
This is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. How did he know he was sleeping? You know, because man and God at that time, there was no sin. So the spirit of man was in tune with God. So bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, Adam was the one that gave the woman the name. Listen, the office of the man can never be usurped. Adam is the one that named all the animals and he remains so to this day. Adam is the one that named the woman. What, made, what does that tell you about a man? A man is designed to be a leader. Is designed to, to have a vision, to have insight, to have the ability to control his environment. He's designed to name things like God. That's who a man is. And the men here, you need to cry out to God. I say, God, I want to enter my position as a male man. I don't want to be a woman. A woman has a place. A man is created to lead, to rule, to reign, to take responsibility. Not to beat up a woman. Not to go to jail. The population of the jail today, 99.9% .9 of the population are men. They have derailed from destiny. They are meant to dominate. Situations and circumstances is dominating them. We are talking about the intent of God. Because if you don't know the purpose of God, you would go astray. So God wants you to rule and reign. And so he gave you a woman. She's not your problem. She's your helper. That woman in your hand is called to help you achieve destiny. Why her office is running side by side you, the two of you, you see, marriage, let's even go there. Marriage is teamwork, is partnership. The two together working with the plan of God for their lives on earth. That's what marriage is. If your marriage is not like that, you can pray today. It can be like that. That means you and your wife, you are pursuing God's purpose for your life. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, don't sleep. I bind the spirit of sleeping. Because the angels are bringing your blessing and you are sleeping and they will just pass. Say, where is it? Where is it? He has slept. That will not be your portion. Praise God. If you're feeling sleepy, please stand up. We are, and then walk around. We will not know, don't worry. Praise God. As we continue to read, it says, this explains, this explains, what is the this there? Why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. Is the man that leads. That's what God said. Not man, not society, not culture. Why a man, a male man, leaves his father leaves his mother and cleave to his wife. In other words, is the man that should be pursuing the woman. The word cleave means to hold on to. To hold tight to. He's not pursuing a girlfriend. He's pursuing his wife. Not a girlfriend. Many of us pursue the girlfriend where he was girlfriend. After we married, we stop pursuing. The new wife says you should cleave. You should pursue the woman. Be intentional. Make the effort. It is, she's not a complete project. You say, you know, it's like one project. You know, when, when the male man is chasing something, once he's gotten it, it's finished, it's done, I've, I'm done with that. No, not with marriage. You are just starting. Okay? So the woman must make herself chaseable. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, make yourself chaseable to your husband. Now listen, he says, and then what happened? The two of them are united into one. Now the man and his wife were both naked but not ashamed. There are nine things we need to take from that intent of God from the beginning, which I call the ideal marriage, the intention of God. Because the, the question here says, we want to remember the intent of God. Why, why did you marry? Why did you marry? Number one, it is not good to be alone. 
So marriage is partnership, is teamwork, is cooperation. Is teamwork. Many people are running alone and you are married. Why are you running alone? It's not good to be alone. You are, that alone there is not only talking about companionship. It's talking about walking this earth alone. Carrying your wife along. She's your partner. She's she, cooperation. Cooperate with her because two are better than one. They will have a good reward for their labor. You have a help. Do you imagine somebody? Let's, the Holy Spirit is called our helper now. We have him living in us. But what if we don't use his help? Are we not, the, you know, we are, what's it called? We are um, losing out. Or if a person has a domestic helper at home, you have a domestic helper, and the domestic helper is just sitting down, and you want to clean, you want to do, and you are doing everything by yourself, are you not punishing yourself? So it's partnership. Number one intent. God wants you to walk side by side with your wife. So you must understand the wife. The husband must understand the uh, husband. Now, 1 Corinthians 11, 11. Let's, we are doing biblical study now. Biblical study. Some of you guys says, I don't need a man. You do. I don't need a man. What a man can do, a woman can do. I refuse to agree with you. Not everything a man can do, a woman can do. If we are built differently. I can't go enter the ring now and go and be boxing. I know there are some women boxers, but I don't know what they were. A woman is fragile. Why are you entering boxing? They will just box you. You will break. I know I'm online, but some people say, uh, you know, uh, they are feminine. Yes. But where you can be a boxer if you like. I'm not saying don't be a boxer. Please listen to me now. I'm on YouTube. I didn't say don't be a boxer. I'm just giving my own opinion, at least. Free speech. One goal, one vision. Every man needs a woman. Every woman needs a man. Say it to yourself, I need a man. I need a woman. Okay. <laughs> now, this does not necessarily have to be a love or sexual affair. We all need... You see, there are things men do at home. And there are things women do at home. There are things women do that men cannot do. Can a man get pregnant? Change the law how you like. Men cannot get pregnant. Full stop. Okay? So, everybody pass, walk in his own lane. And if we do, there will be harmony everywhere. Praise God. So, let everybody understand who God has made them. Ecclesiastes tells us that two are better than one. They will have a good reward for their labor. We live in a free world. So when, you know, when, wherever I go, I'll tell people, I say, my husband, my children, uh, that's me. It's my right to call my husband my husband. I choose not to call him my partner. He's my husband. Because you don't know, maybe partner is dog or, or wood. Or so, so that people may know that my partner is a man and is male and is a husband. <laughs> Praise God. Number two, it says I will make him a helper. A helper. What was the purpose of God making a woman? To help a man. God is for you. Marriage is to help you, both male and female. Even if you take the statistics from the Office of the National Statistics, the ONS, you will find out that couples who live in harmony are a hundred times better than single people. If, because if you join forces together, you are better. So aim for two. It's not good for a man to be alone. They say if he sleep on the bed, where will he get heat? Huh? Uh, electric blanket. <laughs> What's the word? You know, natural cannot be the same as artificial. A lot of people are going the way of artificial. Uh, nah. Nah. We, the kingdom of God, we go the way natural. Praise God. A helper, that means you must help one another. I love what that lady said, that the husband provided help. Be, pro, be a problem solver. You know, there are some marriages that, marriages is a two-way street. Uh, marriage is a two-way street. 
for some relationship, they, there, there is a burden on one person. Why the one person is carrying a lot of the burden, why do people divorce? They feel that their needs are not met. And they've been in this journey for so long, and it's no longer worth it. It's best to go your own way. So don't make your spouse, male or female, feel that way. Come up with solutions to any of the problems. Don't just sit there and consume things. Find solutions. Be the one that is bringing solutions to the problem at hand. Don't wait. A helper to one another. Help each other succeed. Praise God. And I think this is where society, uh, we missed it. Especially in our culture, where we are coming from. And we know we, we've all been deceived. Society has suffered for centuries because we have not had a balance. The, the young guy, I can't remember one who said there had to be a balance in everything that we are talking about. So when God was silent about the woman bringing help. But that doesn't mean that the woman doesn't need help. Because if you have a helper that you are not feeding, Will that helper be able to help you? Uh -huh, okay. So, let's take for example now. If I need a helper to carry this lantern or this podium, I'm not going to get a two-year-old because a two-year-old will not be able to help me carry it. My helper will have equal strength like me. Must be able to even help me even more. And that's the Holy Spirit. So, the one that is helping also needs help. How can somebody be helping you and you will not give the person help? That's the problem of today's society. Because the Bible was silent. And so some of us, when we marry, we say, yes, the woman is coming. The woman will come. The woman will do this. The woman will do that. Because the Bible said, is a helper, is a helper, is a helper. Change your mind. You to serve, you will help. So that the helper can help you. So when the helper is happy, help you say, no, I'm tired. I don't want to help again. Because the helper has not been helped. Okay, so why does God equip us? In Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible said that, you know, God will give us gifts to equip the church. God didn't send us on a mission without equipment. The equipment that we have is the Holy Spirit. That also. So equip your helper. If she needs to go to school, educate. If whatever she needs to do, do. If, if, if he or she has, you know, whatever it is that is making you not happy, change it yourself by equipping that helper. It could be your husband, it could be your wife. It's too late now to want to go and look for another man. You are married, you are married. Full stop. So face the one you have. You can't change. In the kingdom of God, we don't change spouses. Till death do you part. That's what you signed on your wedding day. So, and marriage is a covenant. Covenant is not a promise. God does not break covenant. So, whatever you have to do to change it, please do. Tell your neighbor, do whatever you have to do. So, let there be peace in your home. So, the woman must know that she's called to help. And the man must also know that he's called to help. Remember that God brought her out of the rib cage of the man, out of the rib. Why that place? Why didn't God bring her from the leg or from the hand or from why the rib cage? What function, the, those of you who are doctors here, what protection close to the heart? So the relationship must be close, heart to heart. And the man must provide protection. Women need to be protected. Because they are weaker vessels. That's what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3. They need protection. Protect them from danger. That's why the man, you have to be a cover. You see, when a woman is with a husband, she is very secure. You know, somebody said to me, oh, a widow said to me that, you know, I, you know, I don't like uh, workmen, plumbers coming to my house now. I feel vulnerable because her husband has passed. The one who was providing protection. So when a, when a man is with a woman, you provide protection. 
protection from danger, protection from all kinds of things, protection from society, protection from people, protection from ill-laws, protection from everywhere. Because she's your rib, you are to cover. Praise God. And the woman to do the same, provide protection. At last, he, he exclaimed in excitement. You know what that means? Somebody like me. At last. At last. Somebody with the same mind. I couldn't reason with cows and goats. But at least I, this, this is somebody in my frequency. You know, it is only in marriage that you have that type of intimacy. It's no, it, and human beings desire it because that's how God designs it. For two people to be so intimate, there's no third party. I want to pause here. Sometimes in marriages, one couple transfer the love for the other to children. It's wrong. You now love the children more than the husband. Or the husband loves the children more than the wife. You create problems. Division. The children are not meant to be by your heart. No, it's, it's her space. It's his space. So I tell women, after you have had a baby, mm -hmm, the required, is it 12 months? They say the baby must slash on to the mother. Okay. Once 12 months has expired, it has expired. Return the property to the owner. It belongs to the man. <laughs> Not The baby was just there for temporarily. Uh, read Proverbs chapter 5. Why are you laughing? Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 6. It's written in black and white there. You don't read it. Eh? Yes. The baby only borrowed for the number of months that the baby will feed. Praise God. Mother, don't be saying baby, baby. Stop. The owner of the, is waiting. <laughs> Praise God. He named her. You know what he did? He gave his fellow men instruction. You know it was Adam that said, this is now. Not God. It was Adam that said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So Adam gave you guys instructions. Which means pursuing unity to achieve oneness in the home. The two becoming one. Stick together. Disallow third party. Both should make the effort. Continue to pursue. I've said it before. Okay, so don't go after other women. Don't look at any somebody else's wife. Uh, or oh, husband. I wish my husband is like that. Go and make your own husband like that. I wish my wife is like that. Make your wife like that. Ephesians chapter 5. The Lord Jesus Christ said we should copy him. What does he do? He washes the woman. He cleanses her. He nourishes her. And then what does he do? He brings her to himself. Bring your own wife to your own standard. Bring your own husband to your own standard. Make out of him or her what you want them to be. That's what it says. Then the Bible says they were naked. Okay? That simply means transparency. They were naked but not ashamed. Not ashamed. No secrets. Okay? So we see here now that the word shame, I, I paused and I said, not a shame. We're seeing shame for the first time. We've never encountered shame before. So how would, you know, even before Genesis chapter 3, when shame, it was the curse that God placed on man that brought shame. But we saw shame before that. So what does that represent? It simply says, what is shame? A painful feeling of humiliation. Or distressed. Caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behaviors. God says in this marriage. Let nobody behave foolishly. That will bring pain to the other person. Be considerate. They were both naked and not ashamed. Paul said. You know I think it's in Corinthians. He said if meat will cause my brother to sin. He said I will stop eating. There was nothing wrong in eating meat. But I stop eating it because it's causing offense. So we must stop the things that are causing offense. You cannot say. That is how I was brought up. Then you are not, what's the word now? You are not sensitive. 
You are not thinking about your neighbor. You, 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 know, you are causing offense. It meets with, if you don't eat meat, you will not die. So if it is offending somebody, then stop it. Don't insist on doing it. Naked, but not ashamed. God's intention for our marriage. I hope we have gotten the seven intention of God for marriage from that verse. A perfect marriage where the man and the woman work in harmony to bring good to their environment. So marriage is the foundation for all civilization. It's the first institution that God created before anything else. The whole world, as we see it, is sitting on the foundation of marriage. Whatever confusion or commotion you see anywhere on the earth, it started from the home. It started from the home. And I'm so glad for all of you young people here. Please hear me well. God has a great destiny for your life. He has a great vision that you should achieve at this time. Because the time is short. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. There's much to be done. He doesn't want you distracted. He wants you to organize your home front in such a way that your home front is not disturbing your destiny. It's not disturbing your race. It's not disturbing your running. So you must be willing. What can I do to make my home front less stressful? No shame. Why? Like our mommy said here. So that I will not be distracted. Many people are stuck in the mud. They are stuck because of their marital relationship. They can't move to the right. They can't move to the left. Because issues are not resolved. Destinies are just stagnated. You can't begin to run. And God says, I'm calling you to lead nations. I'm calling you to be great on the earth. You need to learn how to live with your spouse. And I need the two of you to achieve greatness on earth. You need to learn. And that's why I'm so glad. You know, before us, I don't know, your generation now is amazing. In my generation, nobody talks about nothing. We just woke up. We saw human beings. We saw father, we saw mother. I don't know about you. Your parents may have had a wonderful relationship. Well, me, I didn't even know what that means because I lost my father at a very early age. So I don't even know what relationship is all about. And nobody told you anything. So you just do what you thought human beings were doing. If you are like me, well, welcome. But now, the Bible says in the days of ignorance, God winked. He said, it's okay, they were all ignorant. He said, but now, nah. God has commanded we should, the word repent means have a change of mind. The word repent, have a change of thinking. Which means get information. You can no longer begin to live in ignorance. We survived ignorance, but you are not allowed to be in ignorance. Learn. Find that we, nobody taught us how to communicate. We are talking communicate. Uh, who told you how to communicate? In the, in the town where I came from, we are very boisterous. From the south-south. You can be standing here and when you are shouting, somebody will hear you three streets away. That's wrong communication. That's how you, you know, you, when you want to tell a child to sit, you will scream, you will think the child itself will be so frightened. Do we communicate like that? Dysfunctional ways of communicating. We have to learn the new ways. We were all brought up like that. In our culture, we are very rude. We don't have customer services. You go and buy something, the person you are buying something for, will even be insulting you and you are the customer. We don't have communication skills, many of us. We don't know how to relate. Nobody taught it in school. Relationship is a skill. You've got to learn it. So instead of consuming YouTube and all kinds of things, just entertaining yourself, develop yourself. Learn skills that you don't have so that you can be a better person for yourself. There is information there. Get information so you learn how to communicate. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. Every one of us can learn. You learn how to communicate. Um, can I even pause here before I say? If I fast for 30 days, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh, thank you. 
Oh Lord, please teach me how to communicate. Oh Lord, oh Lord. How many of you know how far we go with my prayers? Oh Lord, God will say, get up, register in a school, go get some communication lessons and skills, then do a lot of practice. There are certain things we, we use prayer for that we don't need prayer for. And that is marriage as well. There are things to pray for. There are things to do practically. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, what he began to teach and to do. It is he that doeth the will of God that shall be saved. Many of us don't do things. We are praying. We are binding. I am not saying don't pray. Prayer has its place. But prayer will not solve problem if you are rude. Prayer will not solve your problem if you are stingy. Prayer will not solve your problem if you are untidy in the house and there is everything scattered. You can pray from now till whenever. I say to people, if you want, if you want, if you have an apple seed and you want apple out of that seed, if I stand here, Pastor Kende and his family, they will go home, all of you will go. And I say, I want to do vigil seven days. I'm praying on that seed. I didn't put it down to plant it. I didn't put water. I didn't look for soil. How many of you think that I will get apple? Some of us behave like that. You are wondering why we are frustrated. Get up and do the needful. Then you will get answers. You will get to where you are going. New wine. That's the new way of moving. That's the new way of moving. Practical things. Do you know love in action? Love is action. It's active. You have to act. Praise God. So, I think I've just given you to strive to take practical steps to examine the, and sustain the intent of God. Grow and groom your marriage in love and respect uh, for each other. The word grow means to expand. If you have something that is small, increase it. Eh? Okay. So, how do you expand your love? You increase it. You grow it. You do these practical things that we are talking about. So, your love can grow. And then, what's the word groom? Let's come back to groom. We are breaking these things down. You say grow and groom. So who is the groom on a wedding day? Who is the groom? Why is he called a groom? Who knows? What is the meaning of grooming? Hey, please listen. The day you marry, you don't have a wife. You had a bride. She's not yet a wife. You groom her because you are the groom. To become your bride. To become your wife. Work to be done. The groom. is Check groom. The word groom in the, in the dictionary. It means to grow. To train. To, to cultivate. To nurture. So you the groom. You are the groom. Society lied to you. No they did. Culture lied to you. You are the groom. The groom's man. Is that not what they call you? You are to groom. So get your shovel, got your whatever, and groom the bride that you are carrying that day. Groom her to be a wife. You are to groom. Some men will not like me today. But am I saying the truth? Culture has deceived you. They deceived me too. When we enter into marriage, you say, eh, is that what it is? We were deceived. So we now changed our mind. By renewing our mind. So we don't want this generation to be deceived. So that when they are going into marriage, they know what they are going into marriage for. And how to make it succeed. Now, receive fresh and sustaining wine for their marriage. How do you receive fresh and sustaining wine? How do you do that? Number one, you've got to be linked to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are not born again, you, I'm not saying attending church. If you are not born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the carrier of new wine. How can you receive the new wine? You must be born again. Marriage is supposed to be heaven on earth. How many of you know that there's no marriage in heaven? Uh, marriage is only here on earth. And please do not let that take you to hell. Marriage is not required in heaven. Because in the next world that we are coming, we are all like angels. Nobody will be married there. So you only have one chance. Tell your neighbor one chance. <laughs> you 
you only have one chance to do it right. Here on earth. Yeah, hey, praise God. So you will do it what? Right. Because there's only one chance. Praise God. Isn't God wonderful? They, you are surprised when the disciples said, ah, Jesus, if marriage is like this, I don't think I want it to. <laughs> praise God. But marriage is beautiful. It tells us about who God is. It refers us to our relationship with God because Jesus Christ is our bridegroom. And we are his bride. So marriage is, is like a metaphor of the relationship of God with man. It's a wonderful institution. Hebrews 13, 4 says, marriage is honorable. Honorable. That means every human being on earth must honor marriage the way God said. Marriage is honorable by all. Is the marriage, though, is an institution. It says, and the bed, the bed, don't defy the bed. God will judge. God himself, he does not look for anybody. He's the one who judges the adulterers and the adulteresses in marriages. Let's bow our head. Let's thank God for what we have heard. I don't know if you have questions and answer. Pastor will tell us how to move forward. But you brought me here, and I'm sure that the Almighty God has spoken to you. Marriage is a good thing. Why don't you pray and say, Father, I want to go in the new way. Please renew my mind. Renew my mind in the name of Jesus Christ. Give me a new understanding of marriage. Give me a new understanding, oh God, of how to make my marriage work and sweet here on earth. Oh Lord, our God. This is the maiden edition of the Young Couples Fellowship in, in JCC. My father and my God, the Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, though thy beginning was small. Our God and our King, what you have begun, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it has never entered into the heart of man, what you are going to bring out of these conferences. You are building homes so that you can use them as a formidable force on earth. Lord, we thank you for what you have done in here today. We thank you for the men and women that have listened to the teachings. We thank you for the equipment that you have given them. We thank you, ancient of days, because these ones, their lives will never remain the same. Their marriages will work. Their marriages will be filled with joy and peace. They themselves will be an agent of change. Men and women will come to them and they will be helping men and women succeed in their marriages. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, everlasting Father. For in Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.